Hello everyone, welcome to part 8 of our tutorial series in which we are recreating the Apple Fitness Plus interface using React and advanced CSS techniques. We've come a long way, there's a lot of great stuff on the screen and it's starting to come alive. In this part we are going to leverage that uh, video player component to finally use the JSON file to start syncing animations in the interface to events in the video. So let's get started. So let's go over here, open this up, and if you go into your assets folder, if you dragged everything over from the zip I provided, you see the metadata uh, JSON file. Assets isn't really the right place for that though, so let's go new folder, and we'll create a folder called data, and we'll move the metadata into our data directory. Let's have a look what's in this metadata. It's basically a JSON, it is a JSON object, with entries that have time, every one of them has time. This is time in seconds. And then various, um, various information. The user's heart rate, and because we're not going to be hooking this up to a real heart rate monitor or an Apple Watch, we're going to fake this for this tutorial. Same with calories. The heart rate is 85, decent resting heart rate, some calories, one. The burn bar is going to be low. We haven't done anything yet. Do we want to show the info box? No. Do we want to show the intensity yet? No. Do we want to show the timer yet? No. But at 12 seconds, we do want to show the info box. At 20 seconds, we want to show the timer, etc. All the way down through the entire video. And we are very quickly going to wire up and use all of this data. So to do that, let's go back to our app.tsx and import the JSON data. So we're going to call it metadata. Import meta data from data metadata.json. Now we need to create an interface for the JSON information. So to do that, I went through and took out all the possibilities of what was in the metadata and created an interface, which I'm just going to cut and paste in here. But you can see the interface called metadata has time, which is a number, show info box, which is Boolean, show timer and all the timer information, show intensity and the intensity information, heart rate, calories, and burn bar. So all of them, except for time, are optional. That way, if you were to go through and want to edit the JSON later, you wouldn't be able to screw anything up because TypeScript would keep you honest because of the interface you've created here. But what each of these represents is a bit of state, a little bit of state. So we are going to add some more state variables. And for expediency's sake, I'm just going to cut and paste them. So from my notes, we'll put them after this one here. And you can see that each of these bits of state corresponds to a bit from the metadata, timer, burn bar, calories, etc. So what we basically need to do is run a function every time the time updates on our video. To do that, we're going to use a use effect that listens for that change in current time. Then within that use effect, we're going to set one or more of these depending on the commands in the JSON file. So if at 20 seconds, the burn bar, calories, heart rate, and timer running are all set, we'll do that all within this use effect. So let's hammer that out right now. And if at any time you're playing along at home, you just want to pause and type these things up, you're welcome to. And of course, the completed project is on my GitHub. So let's create that use effect. So the first thing we want is the current instruction. So to do that, we're going to go constant current instruction equals metadata. And we're going to find the instruction that's at the current time.
current instruction, metadata find, instruction, of mass.floor with current times, with current time is 5.7 seconds. We're going to find the instruction at 5 seconds. And I put this outside the parentheses on accident. And we need to add the dependency array, so this knows when to update. This will update every time current time updates. And then just for fun, let's console.log the current instruction. Play, open up the console. Play. Hello everyone and welcome to this simulated 90 second push-up and burpee workout. Why are we doing such a strange 90 second simulated workout? So that you, my fellow developer, can build this cool Apple style bit of interactivity while working with an appropriate bit of video that won't get me in trouble for copyright issues. So you can see we're actually getting our instructions here in real time. Show the info box is true, time is 12. So we'll be able to use this information to make things happen in our app. The first thing I think we want to do is control the info box visibility. So set info box visible based on the instructions. So let's take out the console log here. And let's add in a quick if statement to protect against things that aren't defined yet and keep TypeScript happy. If current instruction, nothing's going to happen if current instruction isn't happy. Next, we're going to create a type. And we're going to call this setter function. And it's going to equal react.dispatch. I want to type it as a react.set state action. Give that anything. And now we need to create a set of setters. This is going to be the way we tie the actions in the JSON into actual actionable um, commands. And let's open that up. And for now, we're just going to do show info box, and we're going to map that to set info box visible. That'll do for now. Now, we need to loop over the commands at the current time and run all the commands that we find in there. So object entries, this will be the current instruction. And for each instruction we have, which are going to be key value pairs, We're going to first check if the instruction has a key and a value. If the key is in the setters and the type of the value is not undefined, then we will need a new setter function. And for that, we will find the instruction using the key. And we will set function of the value. complaining about something for the key here. Let's see what's something like type string any cannot be used as an index. No, I forgot to wrap my key value pair in square brackets to make it an array. There we go. Now we're happy. So what we've just created is a use effect that listens for changes in current time. It finds the instructions at current time by getting the floor of the current time. So if time is 5.1 seconds, it looks for instructions at the five second mark. If there is one, we set up this setter function. These are our setters. 
and then we loop over all the instructions that we have found. If there is a key and that matches our setters and there is a value that is defined or not undefined, then we fire off that function. So for now, we should be good to start using info box invisible. The first way we're going to do that is surround the info box with a conditional rendering. So we're going to say if info box visible, then draw the info box. There you go. So if we refresh this and hit play, hello. I happen to know that the info box is set to visible at around 11 seconds. So let's see if it pops up. There it is, popping up exactly when we wanted to, based on the metadata that we see here. At time 12, show info box equals true. So it was at 12 seconds. Perfect. So we go back to zero, it goes away, we scrub to 11, hit play, boom, there she is. Perfect. All right, there is still a lot to do, of course, but you can start to see the shape of the whole project, can't you? It's pretty easy to imagine how you get from here to a really nice final product. So leave your questions in the comments. I'll get to as many as I can and leave your better ideas. I'd love to learn from you, of course, and as usual. In the next part, we're gonna use some dynamic CSS uh, to really plus those transitions and, and bring in some some nice animations from one state to the next to bring in that kind of Apple fit and finish that everyone loves so much. So stick around. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.